Well, good morning, y'all. As Blake said, uh, my name is Maria Hicks, and I am uh, one of the painters here. And so you may have seen me um, painting the halls there in Lower Beamer or even at BGC. Um, I have had the privilege of leading a breakaway trip to Angola uh, for the past 11 years. And just to be clear, that's Angola, Louisiana State Penitentiary. Um, believe it or not, we did have a guy one year think he was going to Angola, Africa, bless his heart. And so, you know, in one of our uh, security meetings, luckily, you know, he wasn't too bummed to find out he was going to prison for a week. <clears throat> but with all that said, I want to encourage you to take a break from routine and be open to a divine interruption, if you will, to be present in the day the Lord has laid out for you. So many times we allow routine to numb us to the fact that God is always at work. A break from routine does two things, uh, or a couple of things. It causes you to be more aware of your surroundings or what you're doing, and you would be more inclined to see what God has or will do or can do. Just as in the verses read in Mark 5, Jesus was constantly bombarded by interruptions, divine interruptions, I might add. A breakaway trip can give you the opportunity to take a break from the routine and be divinely interrupted for a week, and maybe even the rest of your life if you allow it, looking for those divine interruptions in your day to day. You know, when I was asked to help lead this trip to a maximum security prison, I first thought, what in the world could I offer to be, that would be a benefit to the students and the inmates? How could I relate? I had no family in prison, no family in law enforcement. I was really, really struggling with what was I going to say? How was I going to be used of the Lord? What I didn't know at the time was that God would use the trips for a divine interruption in my own life even as he was working in the lives of the students and the inmates. What you may need to know about me is that uh, sexual assault is part of my story. When I was 16, a guy who was a few years older than me, someone I trusted, took advantage of me in the worst way and then stalked me for a time after. I never reported it and didn't even tell my parents because I felt like no one could know. Now, going to prison, I thought I was going to be a great minister of grace to these inmates, but what I discovered is that God was doing a work of healing in me during this divine interruption. That what had happened so long ago that I had buried would surface during this trip, thus creating an opportunity to relate. You see, some of the men who are incarcerated there were convicted of similar crimes like the one done to me. And in a moment, I was confronted with the question of whether I could really forgive. Could I love these inmates? Sure, I said I could. But breaking routine forced me to be aware of what was really in my heart. Did I really believe that God could redeem anything or anyone? Did I believe that God could heal me and my wounds and redeem my life? Over the years, I've come to see that 2 Corinthians 5.17 is true, that because of Christ, I'm a new creation, that God is able to redeem and save to the uttermost, as Hebrews 7 tells us, that what or whom God deems clean, let no one call unclean, that this grace and healing wasn't just for me, the victim, but also for the one who committed the crime against me. Well, y'all are familiar with the story about the little boy with uh, the two uh, fishes and five loaves, right? Well, that little boy was among a great multitude, the scriptures say. He brought his little bit, whatever he had, and the Lord took and multiplied it to feed over 5,000 hungry people. The point is that you bring whatever you have and allow God to multiply it. So let me encourage you to think about your spring break as an opportunity to bring your fishes and loaves and place yourself in God's way for a divine interruption 
to allow God to take what little bit you bring and multiply it for your good and his glory. 1 Samuel 12:24 says, Only fear the Lord and serve him faithfully with all your heart. For consider what great things he has done for you. And then in Matthew 25, it is a reminder of how we should think about uh, behaving towards one another, or even just be mindful of how we interact with other people. The scriptures say, Come, you are, who are blessed by my Father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? And when did we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? And when did we see you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers, you did it to me. You know, at Angola, the inmates have a saying. We know they love us because they keep coming back. Wheaton has been going back. This March will be 15 years. It is a testament to what a great uh, institution that Breakaway and Wheaton College uh, is. Uh, at each time that I get the opportunity and privilege to bring new students to the prison, you represent hope and encouragement to them. You know, uh, we visit uh, lots of inmates. And, you know, I had one guy one time say to me that he was so thankful uh, for us coming and that we would bring students. So he hasn't had a visitor in 30 years. Can you imagine? I mean, you're surrounded with all of these people, but yet for someone to come specifically for him meant the world to him. So consider that this time um, as you consider what you're going to do for spring break. So, y'all come go to prison with me. <laughs> or find that trip that will challenge you or cause you to grow. You won't regret being divinely interrupted. Thank you.